Chin. Hello friends and uh, comrades from Common Law Ascent. Uh, we are at the Malvern Hills. On the Malvern Hills we made it. What a fabulous spring it's turning out to be. I decided that it would be a nice place to read the first chapter from, if you're interested, because there's lots of common law information in this, uh, a summary of evidence to justify a petition to the Queen regarding the purported imposition of foreign laws by the European Union on the United Kingdom. So this was in January 2000. So this is what the Magna Carta Society put together, lobbying Leolin Price, the Queen, uh, QC, asking if they can approach the House of Lords to draw together a petition to petition the Queen. So this was before the petition, the Baron's petition, and um, definitely before they, so they petitioned the Queen and then um, because the Queen didn't give an adequate reply, so you can, they are suggesting that um, Article 61 would be in force. Like, evidence as to why Article 61 is in force, if, um, well, it's all in here anyway. So this is predating the petition and the implication of Article 61. And there's like lots of good information in here. So I'm just gonna read the first chapter, but I'm not gonna read Article 61 which is in the first chapter because it's quite long and we've got another article which I'll link in this article which so you can go and read article 61 for yourself and also I'll probably read it out somewhere else and add it to that footage because, uh, article because what we're doing with our Patreon account if you check it out is we're going to different places and doing different readings and then adding to the articles and putting links in the articles and building over time each article like adding to it and making these documents re I'm rewrite I'm writing this document up again and editing it to make it you know attractive again and adding it to that website so you can actually read this yourself as well so I'm just going to crack on we're on Malvern Hills it's lovely and there was a beautiful spring down there it was so beautiful you could drink fresh water coming out of the spring so it was a summary of evidence to justify a petition to the Queen regarding the purported imposition of foreign laws by the European Union on the United Kingdom in January 2000. There's good reason to think that the treaties of Rome, Maastricht and Amsterdam are illegal in the United Kingdom. Further, we argue that their ratification, the enactment of the European Communities Act of 1972 and all consequential laws, directives, regulations and judicial decisions which purport to draw authority from that act were and are illegal in this sovereign kingdom. So this is all about constitutional law, which is why I'm reading it to you. If you're interested in constitutional law, there's so much in here. We argue that the signatories to those treaties on behalf of the United Kingdom exceeded their powers that since and including the passage of the 1972 Act, successive executives have systematically compromised the constitution of this sovereign nation and that all such actions are illegal and prima facie acts of treason and that we have the right to seek redress by petitioning the hereditary House of Lords which has an obligation to take such a petition to the Queen who has an obligation to resolve the matter within 40 days. So that's actually what happened. They did lobby the House of Lords who did take a petition to the Queen who didn't resolve the matter within 40 days and they petitioned her under Article 61 of the Magna Carta. So, yes, it's explaining itself. <laughs> Further, we argue that the United Kingdom's membership of the European Union is null and void, that it can and should be so declared and that all consequential laws, direct regulations, directives and judicial decisions fall with such a declaration. Our justification for such awesome statements starts with Magna Carta 1215, which gave sovereign recognition to already long-standing Anglo-Saxon common law rights and customs. Some 150 years earlier, William the Conqueror had made the first attempts to acknowledge those rights and customs, which ultimately goes back to at least the time of King Alfred. 
Magna Carta is a treaty, not an act of Parliament. As we understand it, Magna Carta, like all treaties, cannot be repealed. As a contract or covenant between sovereigns and subjects, it can, be, it can be breached only by one party or the other, but even in the breach it still stands. It is a mutual binding agreement of indefinite duration. It is a mutual binding agreement of indefinite duration. Any breach merely has the effect of giving the offended party rights of redress. The present Queen referred to Magna Carta as a peace treaty in a speech in New Zealand in 1997. So Magna Carta is an affirmation of common law based on principles of natural justice. These principles and the document itself predate Parliament. To summarise our understanding of these principles and customs, common law is the will and custom of the people. Statute law is the will of Parliament. Statute can and does give expression to common law, but that common law cannot be disregarded by Parliament, nor can it be repealed. It can only be extended. Improved is the word used, but it's open to misuse. No Britain, including members of the police, and armed forces is above the law. No one is above the law. We are all subjects of the Crown first. I pause there because the Crown's been usurped, so yeah. Parliament is made by, law, by the law and is not above it. Parliament is answerable to the people, is elected by the people to protect their interests for a maximum of five years, after which time power is returned to the people who may grant it to another parliament for a further five years and so on ad infinitum. Thus is the sovereignty of the people established over parliament. Magna Carta recognised that rights and customs were of equal importance to the people and both were equally protected by this quote and the city of London shall have all its ancient liberties and free customs. Furthermore, we decree and grant that all other cities, boroughs, towns and ports shall have all their liberties and free customs. If anyone has been dispossessed or removed by us without the legal judgment of his peers from his lands, castles, franchises or from his right, we will immediately restore them to him and if a dispute arise over this, then let it be decided by the five and twenty barons of whom mention is made below in the clause for securing the peace. Thus, Magna Carta recognised the authority of the House of Lords, established its constitutional role and its composition for all time. A quorum is 25 hereditary peers. All fines made with us unjustly and against the law of the land and all amercements imposed unjustly and against the law of the land shall be entirely remitted or else it shall be done concerning them according to the decision of the five and twenty barons who mention is made below in the clause for securing the peace or according to the judgment of the majority of the same provided always that if any one or more of the aforesaid five and twenty barons in a similar suit, they shall be removed as far as concerns this particular judgment, others being substituted in their places after having been selected by the same five and twenty for this purpose only and after having been sworn. I'm not sure what I just read. Does anyone get that? Do you get that? Put it in the comments. <laughs> Article 61 of Magna Carta, the famous enforcement clause, specifically establishes majority voting and it requires four of the quorum of barons to take any grievances or petitions to the monarch and admonish, admonishes the people to rise up against the monarch if and when such grievances are not corrected and that's exactly what happened. So they think we should all rise up in defence of our rights our birthrights, which is why they lobbied the Lords and the Queen in the first place. So then it goes on to read Article 61 of the Magna Carta, which we will just put a link in this article to you to read it yourself. Although the Magna Carta predates Parliament by some 50 years, it was subsequently enacted in 
1297 with the passage of Edward I's Confirmation of the Great Charter Act. 1297 is an act, the statute, uh, which included the words, and we will that if any judgment be given henceforth contrary to the points aforesaid by the justices or by any of other of our ministers that hold plea before them against the points of the charters, it shall be undone and holden for naught. The, the text later includes words to the effect that the Charter of Liberty shall be kept on every point. This admonition was repeated at the coronation of the young Henry III. It shall be lawful for everyone in our realm to rise against us and use all the ways and means they can to hinder us that each and every one shall be bound by our command so that they shall no, in no way give attention to us but they shall do everything that aims at our injury and shall in no way be bound to us until that in which we have transgressed and offenced shall have been by a fitting satisfaction brought again in due state this having been done let them be obedient to us as they were before Bracton's great constitutional work written sometime between 1235 and 1259 said the law makes the king let the king therefore bestow upon the law what the law bestows upon him namely dominion and power for there is no king where will rules and not law so then it goes on to so yeah for there is no king where will rules and not law then it goes on to sovereignty so i'm going to stop there um i believe that the eu law is still in our courts and that actually the supreme court is still talking about eu law so this hasn't been solved and it wasn't solved within that 40 days that they gave her off either so um well you can you probably can work out what they're saying from what i've read it shall be lawful for everyone in our realm to rise against us and use all the ways and means they can to hinder us lawfully. In Article 61, it says safe harming our persons. Safe harming our, uh, our persons and the persons of our queen and our children. Until such time as amends have been made. There's a really big bumblebee. It's quite cute for spring. Thanks for tuning in. We do all of this really spontaneously. and. Um, yeah, we were meant to go to Worcester for leafleting and we goes, oh, we've got loads left, let's go to Morven. And then it's like, oh, should we just go up the hill? Yeah, and I've been meaning to read this and obviously, like, it's quite chunky and then I kind of don't realise how much of a mouthful it is. But um, you can read this because I'm working on, like, editing this and, like, re-uploading it into a p nice PDF. So that will be, like, available in these articles, in the links. On all of our Patreon file that there are files at the bottom and they're in small red writing and so like if you go to the bottom of the article there's like often pdfs available for you to download if you've got this far thank you so much for watching i think we're going to go back down Can the hill now it's getting well. cold let's go and have something to eat <laughs>